Hey guys, it's Jake here with Harker Outdoors, and I've had a lot of people ask about this Tacoma. You may or may not have seen on our Instagram or buzzing around here and there. It is not one of our show trucks. It is my personal truck, and you can tell. So it's dirty. It's used. But I get a lot of questions about it, so I'm going to give you a run through and show you what I've done and show you how I set it up, the ins and outs of the truck and let us know what you think. If you like the build, things maybe I should add or change, but uh, yeah, this is the old dirty Tacoma. So of course, first, you know, you have your normal functionality here. You know, if I was going for setup, what I would do is pop these off. These lashes. I like to leave my table brackets on. You know, if I'm going on a trail that is, uh, I think, a little tight, if it's getting close to my mirror, I'll take these off. Otherwise, I leave them on. So, you know, I've got to give it a little adjustment because the last time I had it out, I had some weight on it. So there's my table. All right, I moved the camera a little further back so you guys can see more of the actual setup. Put them strapping the tent on, that sort of thing. Also, I wanna notate, I am short, but this truck makes me look extra short because I have the Dobbinson 1200 pound leaf spring kit and 34s. So a normal Tacoma tailgate is not this high. Just throwing it out there. Okay. So let's get on with the setup here. So we will pop these latches first. Easy push. I like to leave my annex zipped on, so it is a quick, easy pull-out setup. Put a little uh, bar here. Give that a push. Swing that out to the side. And I've heard it both ways. You know, this annex is extra to set up, but at the same time, you have to remember my bed is completely and totally already set up. sure that's where it's supposed to be. These are optional. I only use those in really bad weather. Um, there's three buttons on each side here in this Velcro, which keeps this all super tight. Like that, make sure it's tight, super simple. Um, now, now my camper is, is completely set up. So as you can see, as you tighten that down, it does get a lot tighter. The tent material does itself. If the weather is bad and if there's high winds and anything where I wouldn't want tent noise, this is, will do the trick. You can give that a pull and as you can see, it's, it's already creating that tension line here. So I haven't had any issues. I camp weekly, whether it's camping or skiing or whatever, we're out in all kinds of weather and I honest to God have had no issues with this. I did add little tabs to the zippers because there's no way around zippers making noise. That pretty much fixed that issue. But uh, these do handle the wind exactly how you need them to. So, I'm gonna give this an unzip and then show you what it looks like. From the inside here. I do have our solar kit. So I have these lights that I can turn on and off over here so we can see what's going on. Um, like I said before, all my bedding is up here. Mattress, heated blankets in there, sheets, um, all, all that are up here. Give that a push. And now we have that, that walking space. So I'll grab the camera, I'll throw it on a wide angle so you guys can see a little bit closer up. I'll give you a quick tour inside there. Don't judge the quality because it's a wide angle on an iPhone in the dark. So sorry about that. Because Apple doesn't look back, they only look forward. Okay, so we've got it on a wide angle. I open up the windows, try and let some light in here to help this terrible camera. Get that nice and tight. So you can see on the corners here, there's a gasket in each corner that covers, um, you know, any bugs or dust or wind or whatever, you know, and you can zip that further down so you get that clearance too. So this is about, all the space I have, and I can walk all the way to this wall. There's still plenty of space here. So on this one, um, I decided to add something that we don't do often, but it is an option. Um, 
we have this flip up table that flips up out of the wall with some legs. It's about standing height so I can stand and cook here. On the other walls here we have molly panels. So of course just uh, some bedding strap there, extra chairs, another chair, some more lights, and back to this control panel. So over here I have exterior lights, I have uh, just a spare switch there, that one's not in use, and then my interior lights as you can see. 12 volt port, USB ports, more USB ports, lots of charging going on over there. Um, over here I have it connected to my inverter, my truck, and the solar. So I, I run a pretty small inverter, this is enough for me to charge my one wheel run Christmas lights, run my large JBL speaker. Uh, I run a lot on that. And also my fridge, my fridge is plugged directly into the back bottom here. So th this is actually standard of what you would get in any third circuit electrical kit. This isn't anything custom. Most of this isn't actually, but uh, I actually have enough power with this system. That's the 200 amp hour battery with 480 watts on the roof. I haven't shut this fridge off in two years and it is always right where I want it to be and there's usually something in it. So if that doesn't say enough power, I don't know what does. Also this sweet easy flight dual head compressor, I decided to permanently mount using the rail, the factory rails on the truck. So that's permanently mounted there um, for the direct switch to my truck. So I can run that as needed and my hose hangs out behind my fridge. So that's just a quick fill up when I need it, along with a, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a pretty big toolbox. So I got all necessary tools, extra jack, cooking, fire pit, pretty much the basic necessities for, for camping. On this side, I do have a diesel heater uh, hooked up. Thermostat is inside, so I can control that from in here. It takes the air from here, heats it comes back out here so the actual unit is mounted outside exhaust stays outside like hold the bed down and give me another view of that so bed down and for people who haven't been in one of these yet there's a lot of space um, even with my legs up here there's still all this standing room so if my wife Katie is in bed I can get up and change or go to the bathroom I still have that space so this tailgate annex really does add a lot to how much room you have even with the bed down and then you can push in your back to your hangout space so okay that was a pretty quick run through um, I'm hoping it was enough to give you guys a good idea of what you know a fairly used Parker EDC looks like. We do have the EXO now, so if you're looking for something smaller, faster to set up relatively, and a little bit more affordable, check those out. Aside from that, this gives you a good idea of what an EDC looks like on a Tacoma. And this is, like I said, a very used one. I use it weekly, uh, and I do a lot of self-guided trips where I take a bunch of people out, and we go between five and seven days and we just live out of this and you know whatever the vehicles come but this is everything i need for that type of off-roading and winter camping even if it's just for a weekend this has all of my necessities so let me show you the rest of this old tacoma on the outside and i'll show you how we close it down and that'll be all all right on to the outside of the truck um, again, it's very dirty. I randomly decided to do this video at the end of the day here and I should have washed it, but I didn't. So let's get past that part, but here's the layout. Uh, diesel heater mounted here. You saw the control on the inside, wiring goes in there. Intake, hot air, exhaust, actual intake uh, for the engine portion is right there. We got the ax, shovel, two gas cans on that mount and my a shower room, which I use a geyser for. I do have an extra water tank up here, but I prefer to use the geyser and just plug that in. Um, the actual suspension back here, we have the Fox Factory Race 2.5s, Dobinson Springs, and some funky uh, bump stops. Don't know what the rims are. They're from an old Chevy, is what I was told, but I like the look. They're 16s, decent, decent tire size. Uh, run it up front. I didn't actually 
go with the same suspension up front. I just wanted a truck that drove the way I wanted it to drive. So I Mitch mashed, Mitch, Mitch, Miss, mismatched, got it, took way too long. <laughs> mismatched my suspension and I went with the old man emu up front on these. I went with the BP51s, external reservoir. They're great, I love them. SPC upper control arms. Then back over to this side, we got the Kamek awning. Love this thing. It pulls, I should have shown this at the beginning. That thing comes out in two seconds. You don't need uh, legs for it. It just unlatches and pulls out. I can't do it because I'm too short and the table's in the way. That was my mistake, should have done it first. But uh, even more gas, like I said, sometimes we're doing long trips that could be days without pavement, which is why I have so much extra gas. Um, also, even more water and roto packs up here. There's my 480 watts of solar. You can see these. this panel is run almost all the way to the back. There's two panels there, so there's 240 each, um, which cover almost the whole roof, but I get a ton of power from that. Um, extra propane in here, propane tank, fire extinguisher, table. I think I've covered it all. I know it was super fast. If people are interested, I'm happy to do a longer, more in-depth walk around on the truck. Maybe I'll clean it next time. Um, but otherwise, I think this just gives a general idea of what one of these looks like. Pretty used and abused, uh, and it holds up extremely well. I love this camper, and not just because I work here. I have had a bus, a van, a uh, Jeep with a trailer. I had a roof tent, I had multiple roof tents. I've tried most roads um, for this kind of lifestyle, traveling here and there and you know, mostly around the US, but driving, and this is by far everything I need and more. Um, I can get anywhere I wanna go and I can be comfortable while I'm doing it. So last thing, I will back these lights up and I will show you how I break it down and how quick it is. And then leave some comments and let me know what you guys think and what else I should do. You can either do this from the inside or outside. You just pull and all that comes off. I'll do this one from in here. Same thing. Pop that. Okay, for video purposes, I'm gonna slide this door over just so you can see what I'm doing in here. Um, I need to pull my bed down. Again, leaving the bedding, pillows, all of that is up here. Um, this helps. It's not necessary all the time, but it definitely helps pull the tent in. So I am gonna put that in. Then folding that, throw that on top. I like to let all the air out and kind of karate chop that tent in. And the tent sits. The dry side is always on the inside, so your bedding doesn't get wet. Uh, this thing gets covered in snow every weekend when you're sitting at the resort, um, and I've never had a wet bed. So as long as you know how to pack it up, your gear won't get wet, you can just leave it there. Or take the doors off if you're really concerned about it, but not necessary if you do it right. Both of those are latched. Now I come around, grab my table. A little bit easier if you close the tailgate, which I forgot to do, but not the end of the world. Probably easier for most people when you're not five, five like me. All right. Then I also like to hang my strap out of the way, but that's really it. Uh, lots of space. I like that extra space, especially when I have a lot of guests coming out. I'm originally from Massachusetts, so um, I have a lot of friends and family that come out and they stay down here, me and my wife stay up there. Everybody wins, it's great. So that is the truck walkthrough of my old Tacoma. Let me know what everyone thinks and maybe I'll do it again. And next time we'll do Joe's truck. Maybe we'll do another one on cams, but uh, for now, thanks for watching.